Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner. We're covering section 734 uh, of Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics, second edition. Um, if I go too fast, you can rewind. If you like what I'm doing, be sure to like and share with your friends so they can watch it too. So, um, what we've described is um, Maxwell's equations. We had this one that had the magnetic monopoles, um, which would be neat. Um, we had, uh, but basically, when, if you take the equations you've already known, Gauss's law, you have a Faraday's law and you have Ampere's law and add Maxwell's correction to Ampere's law then you have Maxwell's equations. Um, how do these things behave in matters when you have the D fields and the um, uh, the magnetization M fields? Okay. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, the, the polarizations and magnetizations and you have D fields and you have um, uh, H fields. Okay. So um, we have that in the static case the bound charge density is equal to negative the divergence of the polarization of the material we're talking about. That's capital P, not small p. Um, and we have likewise for the bound current, that's equal to the cross of the magnetization, the curl of the magnetization in the material. Okay. Um, and of course we have the equations for the surface, how those, how those work. Okay. One of the things is that um, uh, if, if you imagine that we had a uh, chunk of polarized material. Okay, so let's kind of draw that. We have like a noodle. A polarized material where it has a polarization P. Okay. Um, there is, um, because of the discontinuity outside, there's no polarization. You're going to get a sigma, uh, a surface bound charge, and a surface bound charge over here. Okay. Um, oh, this one's negative. Okay, and that's going to be equal to um, if uh, it's 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 uh, uh, p dot d a or yeah the the you take the normal of p and and you get the uh, the normal surface normal dot the p and that's the surface surface charge density. Okay, so what if that surface what if the polarization is changing? Well, now you have your surface charges are changing as well. So the current density. Um, due to polarization is going to be equal to the change in polarization over time. So you're going to get a current. As you change the polarization, you're going to get a current. Let me just really map out quickly. So there's a change in the current is equal to the change in uh, sigma b, the bound surface for surface charge over time. Um, and how much is the bound surface charge going to change? Well, it's going to change in proportion to how p changes because it's just the dot product of p dot the normal. So, okay. So now we have that the current is equal to the change in time of the polarization. Okay. I want you to kind of let that sink into you that when you have a polarization that's changing because you know the, the charge density is changing, you have to have a, a, a current that basically makes up for that. Um. A uh, way to think about this is, like, let's say you have a tube, polarization small p, and then the same tube later on has a very large p. Well, what happens is before you have a small negative charge and a small positive charge over here, right? And then now you have a very strong negative charge and a very strong positive charge, right? So how is that possible? Well, current must have been flowing along the direction of the change in p. Okay, so there's a current, a polarization current that flows with the change in P. Okay, um, what is the divergence of this P? So the divergence of this JP, this, this polarization current, well that's just the divergence of the polarization. And what's that equal to? Well, we can bring this side and the inside, so we get d by dt of the divergence of the polarization. And what's the polarization? Divergence of the polarization, that's just equal to minus the change in the bound charge over time. Okay, so indeed, everything is still happy. So if there's a change in the bound charge, there must be some current flowing to make up the difference. Um, the interesting thing is if you change magnetization, um, it doesn't do anything with charges. There's currents flowing, and either the currents are flowing or they're not. And 
if they're changing their speed, they're not, there's no accumulation of charge anywhere, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, the total charge density. Okay, so the total charge density, rho, is equal to the free charge plus the bound charge due to the polarization. Okay, and this guy is equal to that, so we get minus the divergence of the polarization. Okay, and the current density, the total current density, is equal to the free current plus the bound current due to the magnetization of the material plus this, um, this current due to polarization, changes in polarization. So we can rewrite that as JF plus JB. Oh, I'm sorry, the curl of the magnetization plus the change in the polarization over time. Okay, so now we have Gauss's law that says the divergence of the electric field is equal to rho. Uh, I'm sorry, one over epsilon naught, rho. Um, what's rho? Well, this is just one over epsilon naught, the free charge minus the divergence of the polarization. And we remember we did move this guy over the other side, so we have the divergence of the D field is equal to rho f, the free charge right here, where the D field is defined as epsilon naught E vector plus P vector. Okay, This should be review for you. Hopefully it's not new. Um, so with Maxwell's term Ampere's law, we get the same kind of behavior there. So we have the curl of the B vector is equal to mu naught times the current. So we have the free, vector, the free current plus the the curl of the magnetic field um, plus the change in the polarization over time. Okay, and uh, we have to add in Maxwell's correction, mu naught, e naught. Okay, and so doing a little bit of simplification there, we have the curl of the H vector is equal to the free current um, plus, and we can monkey around here and get the change in the d vector okay over time so see here see here this guy okay and we have h vector of course is defined as uh, 1 over mu naught the vector minus the m vector the magnetization okay um point is out again so d vector is epsilon naught, naught e vector plus p vector. So here's dp by dt, that's part of that. And here's epsilon de by dt. Okay, all right. Um, so Faraday's law doesn't change. Um, the divergence of b is zero. And so finally, we can rewrite all of Maxwell's equations for material as first we have Gauss's law. is just the free charge. Then we have the divergence of magnetic field is always zero. Then we have the curl of the E vector is minus the change in the magnetic field. And then finally we have this, this new um, Ampere's law equals the free current plus the change in the d vector, okay? And uh, for linear meet, excuse me. Uh, uh, so we have, let me just remind you, so d vector and h vector. Okay, that's what those are. And this is the polarization of the material and the magnetization of the material. And the changing magnetization of a field doesn't really change anything else. All right, um, except for whatever change in the magnetic field you get. Okay, in linear media, we have our susceptibilities and all those different things. So we have linear p vector is equal to epsilon naught chi naught chi e of the electric field. The magnetization is equal to chi m of the H vector. 
and so d vector epsilon d vector and h vector is one over mu d vector. Okay. Um, so remember we called the the um, the change in the electric field in Maxwell's equation. We call that the displacement current. Well, here we actually have a good reason why to call it displacement field. Because we have the displacement field D, and that is actually going to be equal to um, this guy. So the change in displacement D is displacement current. It makes a lot of sense. Anyway, um, I know that when, when I first covered this course that I, I kind of struggled with the electric fields in matter and the magnetic fields in matter. I think this is a good point in time to go back and review what happens inside of matter. Um, for electric fields and magnetic fields. Um, there is basically only one one trick that I really used here and it had to do with Ampere's law. Okay, so kind of, you know, the charges, there's no, basically changing magnetization doesn't create a charge, but a changing polarization does create a current. And so you have to add in that polarization current into the thing. And so your, your Ampere's law for the H field depends on D and not E. Okay, and that's basically the one little trick that, that, has, to, that has to happen. So, Anyway, thanks for your time. I hope this helps. I uh, hope this clears up some confusion. Um, this is a good time to start memorizing things if you're having trouble, too, um, in reviewing material so you can really, really capture what's happening here. So thanks for your time. Goodbye.